What's going on everybody is Caleb coming at you pre-recorded with another video today we are going to be talking about updating customers and deleting customers through our new fancy API which connects with MongoDB. We've built the functionality to list all of our customers, list an individual customer, and add new customers. So we're almost there, we just got a little bit more, and then we're going to talk about using this API with most likely a new fetching framework. So that's going to be cool, get a little bit more experience. So let's get started. We are going to be inside of the ID file, which is located inside of API customers. You can also see that in the breadcrumbs here. This is going to be the API endpoint to grab an individual customer. However, this is also going to be the path that we use for editing a customer and deleting a customer just with different methods because each one of those will require us to pass in an ID that we're going to use to grab a specific customer from the database to do something with it, either display, edit, or delete. We built very similar functionality in Django earlier on in the series, but now I want to move everything over to MongoDB. This would actually allow us to substitute our new backend with MongoDB built with Next.js in replacement of our old backend because everything is going to function exactly the same when it comes to interacting with that API. So what we'll do is we'll get the ID no matter what method is being used and then we will check what method. So if request.method is, and let's say get, then everything we already have is what will be executed. So we'll keep that the same and otherwise we'll say else if request.method is, and we will use put for the edit method and we'll create an empty body there. And then else if request.method is delete, then we will do something else. Now for each one of these, we can define a function similar to how we create a get customer. So let's start first with edit customer and I will define that up here, export const edit customer and this will be async taking in the id of type string and i'm just going to follow the same pattern we built up above where we will take a string or an object id and let's not worry about the return quite yet so i'll just copy this line since it's going to be exactly the same and then we will get a reference to our mongo client there we go and we'll say const response is await mongo client dot db dot collection of customers here. And I have a little typo here, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Now we should be able to say dot replace one, and we will pass in the ID that we want to replace. And there's some important things you should understand here between the difference of replace one and update one. Replace one, you will have to pass in the entire object you want to be used instead of the one currently in the database. So you'll need to create that entire object here. So let's go with that one. Replace one, passing in underscore ID being the ID that was passed in. And what are we going to replace this with? Now you won't need to put this ID in this new object. That'll be done for you automatically. So you can only worry about the fields that you actually care about here, which are all going to come from the body of the request. Very similar to how we create a new customer in this example, where we got request.body.name and request.body.industry. So we will do something very similar over here in the edit capability. So if the method is put, then let's go ahead and invoke this edit customer passing in not only the ID, but we will also pass in a customer of type customer. And that'll allow us to pass in the name in the industry. So let's go ahead and say const data is await edit customer passing in the ID and we can define our object here. So let's go ahead and assign two properties to this, which will be the name and that's going to come from request.body.name and we will have the industry which will be request.body.industry. So that's what will be passed over to our function. And instead of defining that object here, we can just pass in the customer parameter defined up here. And then what we could do is we could just return this 
and I believe this will just be the new edited object. The only last thing we're going to need is to define the response. So inside of here, we will say response.status and we will use 200 and then the JSON we will return will be the data that was returned from our function. And then it's just complaining with our return. I'm going to remove these types for now. And save, and now we'll test this out. So here we are in Postman. First thing, I'm going to grab a list of customers to grab an individual ID, such as this one here with the name test3, ending in 268 for the ID. And we will go over here to an individual customer pasting in that ID in the put method. We will set the name to new name and the industry to new industry and hit send. So this returns a modified count one, which is what we are looking for. So that is how whoever's invoking this API can know that it was successful. And then from the API, you could make a request to get the new customer or whoever's consuming this could use that same ID to make a get request to confirm that the new updated data is there. So let's go ahead and go back to put and we will return just this modified count. So over in our API, we will not just have data here, but we will have modified count, which will just give us the number one. And you could wrap that in an object if you wish such as this here, we'll say modified count and assign that data dot modified count. It's a little bit more descriptive. So the response isn't just a number saying one. Now we know exactly what we're expecting and we could restore our return types if we wish. So it was an object with a modified count property, which is a number or it was an object with the customer property, which is of type customer, or the last option was of type string. So these are the three different types that we should expect to return. Now let's try a similar thing with the delete. So we have edit customer. Let's go ahead and build the delete customer. So we'll say export const delete customer async, and this will take the ID of type string or object. Uh, this is supposed to be object ID, not just object. And that will change what we pass in just a little bit. So now we will pass in ID as string. Similar thing here, we don't need to pass it to new object ID. All right, now let's say export const delete customer async ID is string or object ID. We don't need to pass in the customer data because we're not going to change anything. We're just going to delete it. We will make sure we have the correct ID value, get a reference to the Mongo client, and then return await Mongo client dot DB dot collection customers dot delete one. And inside of here, we will pass in an object with underscore ID being the ID passed in. So we got that function defined. Let's invoke that if we are inside of the request method being delete. So const data is await delete customer ID as string. And that should be it. Then all we have to do is say response to status 200 dot JSON passing in the data that was returned. And this is of type delete result. We can actually just see the properties on it right away using the dot, so deleted count. And then we could wrap it in an object similar to what we did here where we said modified count is data.modified count. So let's go ahead and do that. Deleted count is data.deleted count. And this will need to be defined as one of the possible returns if you are using the typed returns. So deleted count is of type number. And this should go on the outside of those types. Alrighty, save, reformats quite a bit. So now this is our return types and let's give it a shot. We will head over to Postman 
and switching this over to delete, we should now be able to delete the one ending in 268. We hit send, delete account one. And now if we try to get this data, we get customer not found, which I'm going to actually wrap inside of an error object. So we'll say error customer not found. And we'll modify the return so that it's an object. Perfect. There's a few other things I wanted to mention before we end this video. The first being that we decided to use put for the edit capability, but you very well may also see post. Additionally, you could check here to say if request method is put or request method is post if you wanted to have the ability to use both. The general consensus on this, I believe, is that post is used to create a resource and put is used to create or replace a resource. With the key here being that put is item potent, so that if you invoke the same request multiple times, you get the same result. Meaning if we go into our API and we try to modify some customer, first let me grab some customer ID such as this one here, and we want to edit this customer, we can be sure that if we're not convinced that this went through, no problem, we can just send it again. And you can click this as many times as you want without any concern. This is very different than if we were using the post for adding data on our customers API, as that would continually create more and more customers. You could of course have the same exact behavior that we have here with put, just allowing the use of the post method as well. The other thing that is important to know is that when we are using Next.js, which we've been using in these videos, we will be using these endpoints to edit or delete data, and we will be using this endpoint to add new data. The get capabilities such as this here, and this get capability defined here. These were kind of optional for what we were trying to accomplish. You see in Next.js, that behavior is going to be repeated over inside of our customer pages. So for example, here in get static props, we're just going to invoke that functionality and we're not actually using our API. So I know I've said this before, but just to say once more to make sure everybody is on the same page for retrieving data, Whenever possible, we're going to use get static props and 